As night becomes day, the crown of Nagorno-Karabakh displays a stunning aura. It's a poignant reminder for the Azeris who live in Hojavand, described by the UN as a camp for internally displaced people. 19 years ago, this community lived in the real Hojavan, just 15 kilometers away. They were forced out here into no man's land in their own country, following the war in Nagorno-Karabakh. We want the world to know. There is injustice here. Our land is there. We are here. We live here normally. The graves of our ancestors are there. We want to go and visit them. Here we have gas, electricity and running water, but our land is there. My tears begin to fall when I see what they've done to Hojala. How is it possible? It drives me crazy when I see those horrible things. My eyes fill up. Nagorno-Karabakh is Azeri territory with a strong ethnic Armenian presence, which pushed for succession in 1988 as the Soviet Empire fragmented and nationalism took hold. In early 1992, the region declared independence, war was brewing and it broke out the following year. Outside of Nagorno-Karabakh, Armenian troops occupy seven regions of Azerbaijan, taking control of between 16 and 20 percent of the country. Before a ceasefire was signed in May 1994, as many as 30,000 people were killed, 5,000 Armenians and 25,000 Azeris, with one million people forced from their homes and land. We are foreigners in our own land. Here is not home for us. Our land is over there. The son of my dead son wants to go visit his father's grave. The whole world supports the Armenians. As for us, nobody cares. The displaced Azeris see themselves as the forgotten victims of the war. That's despite four UN resolutions calling on Armenia to withdraw from the occupied territories. The lives of those uprooted have been frozen in the post-war chill. In 1993, the UN and other NGOs provided humanitarian aid. In 1999, the Azerbaijan government began the construction of new camps across the region, using oil revenue to finance them. In the early years, post-displacement, things were difficult. Now there has been a visible improvement in material conditions. Azerbaijan began to fill up with camps of the internally displaced. However, the improved living conditions fails to address the central issue for these people. They want to return to their own land. At the Ministry for Refugees and Displaced Persons, the Azeri Deputy Prime Minister explains the logic behind the Great Return. It's a concept that has led to criticism by the Council of Europe. The authorities want to keep the displaced groups together rather than integrate them into local communities. If they live together in the same settlements, it's much easier to move them back. I can either search for them one by one in the cities or reach 1,000 of them living in the same place. Most displaced Azeris now have a roof over their heads. Around 2 billion euros have been invested, including a chunk taken from the state budget, while the rest was supplied by humanitarian agencies. Each family has a house, there's a school and a pharmacy, and a piece of land to cultivate. Many of the camps provide the facilities to live ordinary lives. Water, gas, electricity and rent are free. They also benefit from an annual allowance of 500 euros per person. All told, the displaced are well provided for. Prior to this, it was a battle to survive. The Kuliyevs have spent the last 17 years in what they describe as a metal box, a shelter provided by the EU in the early post-war period. A young couple and their parents live cheek by jowl in a three or four metre structure that they still keep in the yard of their new house. When it rained it was horrible. The house was flooded and there was damp everywhere. Snakes came into the room and we slept with them. It was very dirty. A thousand thanks to our president, he has given us a house. But we're not satisfied. We want our land. A neighbour spots our crew and tells us her story. My husband died for his country in the Armenian massacre. I left barefoot with my kids. I have two boys and a girl. 
The girl will marry soon. But my sons have been brought up to love their country. They're waiting for President Aliyev's call. For now, a military option is not on the agenda, and a line stretching some 120 kilometers separates the Armenian and Azeri military. We visited one of the Azeri observation points in the Tata region. Between the positions are landmines and the Azeri villages destroyed by the occupiers. The ceasefire is often interrupted by rifle fire. The Azeri army say they've responded to 1,300 rounds of sniper fire from the Armenians in 2009 alone. Monitoring the ceasefire violations on the front line of a frozen conflict is difficult for the international community, as nobody can confirm who did what, when or where. The soldiers are young men caught up in a conflict born of history. I would like to study history to learn all about my country's past. Extremism and war have been a feature of the last two decades, but the two sides have coexisted in Nagorno-Karabakh for generations. Like this couple, she's Armenian, he is Airy, and they've lived together for 52 years. When war hit, Yenya fled Nagorno-Karabakh with the Azeris. If they had mistreated me in any way, and if I didn't want to live with them, I wouldn't have come here. I would have stayed there. But they're so nice to me. Some call me aunt, others granny. Some even call me mother. They've done nothing wrong. Sixteen years of living in a place between war and peace has left both sides with a wait-and-see attitude. For 600,000 internally displaced persons, the years gone by are scarred by trauma and survival thanks to humanitarian aid. But will their voices be heard when peace finally descends on the region? Thus far, they say they've simply been ignored. If and when a peaceful solution is found, it will be for both communities to come together. We've lived together and shared the good and bad times. There's no reason why we can't do that again. What interests us is the fact that there have been four UN resolutions calling on the Armenian aggressor to stop this unjustified occupation of our lands. When my students ask me questions about this, I cannot answer. I don't know how. The Azeris claim that a long-lasting attachment to their native land is a distinctive trait among peoples. However, will those born in the settlements have the same passion for Nagorno-Karabakh? as their forebears.